Okay, my outstanding friends, this is going to be fun. <laughs> I doubt if there's anybody that hasn't heard the name Albert Einstein, the genius that solved everything. Well, guess what? I have a different take on it, <laughs> as, as I have on virtually everything. I say Albert Einstein. Unfortunately, Albert, there's nothing against you, but you absolutely destroyed science for over a hundred years. And why? because of your statement about the speed of light being consistent. Now, he actually wasn't that far wrong. He said it, the speed of light in a vacuum will not slow down. And I can't discount that because a vacuum is nothing to, to, to keep it from pushing forward. There's no resistance. In a vacuum, there's absolutely nothing. There's no fields, there's no particles, there's nothing. I can't discount the fact that it would stay consistent. However, there is no vacuum anywhere, anywhere. This is in the light of day, and this is a pulsed red laser. Literally, this pulsed red laser. Now, what are we looking at here? Well, we're looking at particle-wave duality. The particle is inside the wave. It's just like a jet fighter. It, it's got to break through everything that's in front of it, which is all these particles. All of these little dots are gases that are in the air. Water molecules, gases, you know, moisture and so forth. It's got to get out of the way for this light to get through because that light is a particle and it has a field surrounding it. So the particle is a little tiny thing. I'll show you the particle. And the field has to get through all of this. Now, the speed of light is consistent, they say. Never varies. 186,000 miles an hour no matter whether, you know, in space, in the vacuum of space. Let's just go with that. That's fine. There's no space. There's no vacuum. That's the most insane thing I've ever heard of. The, the space is completely saturated with these particles. And the same particles that are light are coming to us. There's obviously they're in space. So let's see those particles. All right, let me just turn the lights off so we get a little better display here. Now, what are we looking at? Remember I just showed you light from a pulsed red laser. And all these little dots are the gases in the air that are being excited because it's called push to shove. This particle is pushing. These are shoving back. Anytime you have a bounce against anything, it creates a glow. That's why we see things light up. When light hits it, that bounces back and we see it. That's what these things are doing, bouncing back because they're being concussed. Now, what happened here? That's light accelerating. So, Albert Einstein was not correct. Light easily accelerates and this is in the medium of the gases. It's not only accelerating, it's accelerating through all of the debris that's in front of it. Now, what's this? That's the particle. And why is it this color here, you know, very dim here, and then it's all of a sudden it got real bright and then it just got exploded? Well, what happened is this is a Venturi, which is a crusher. It's a field crushing device. It's exactly like CERN and Fermi Lab are doing, only they're hitting them head on to crush the fields. We crush them sideways. We're much more, much more elegant, actually. <laughs> now, what is this? These are the particles. I told you there's a particle and then there's a wave. The particle has a, a field around it. As it comes forward, the field has to break through everything that's in front of it. That's it right there. The particle's sitting right there. That particle sits right there. It's got to get through everything else going through. Now, does light slow down? We know it speeds up. Okay, did anybody deny that? No, you can't deny that. It's speeding up. And that, my friends, is is extreme, extreme amounts of energy. So we have ex increased the energy value. And this, we may be able to get free energy. But let's just get back to speeding up. Yes, absolutely, Einstein was wrong. Will it slow down? Absolutely, Einstein was wrong. This is blue light coming in real hot, and then it's slowing down. That is the nature of light. It is a particle. If it re hits resistance, it will slow down. And that's what's happening in space. Its space is saturated. Absolutely, completely, 100% saturated. They call it the quantum foam. 
I know they're all the particles of light, which is a particle. They're dust. They're ions. There's molecules. There's gases. There's vapor of every different type. And there's planets and there's comets and asteroids. and I mean, everything. the debris is just incredible. And they say, no, light just keeps going 186,000 miles a second. That is just so far wrong. It's unbelievable that they can continue to hold on to Einstein so tightly. Einstein was literally wrong about everything except that light could probably stay at one consistent speed if there was absolutely no va no particles in front of it, no resistance whatsoever. I don't see why it would slow down. I can go along with that. That's the only thing I can go along with what he says. And energy is mass. Mass is the impact value. This mass impacts this with a certain value. This is the same particle, but it impacts with a much stronger value. Mass is the impact value, all right? So, the, and, and energy is impact. That's energy. This isn't impacting anything. There's no energy really hard here. It's just a little bit. When it hits here, whole different story. That is energy. Whenever you see illumination, brightness, radiation, and that is as radiation as you can get from one little tiny little bit of light, that, my friends, I think we can get free energy. And we got to get away from Einstein. Einstein was wrong. Okay, my friends, I've shown that light speeds up, light slows down, and light spins. All right, and light spins. It does not flap like a wave like this. If you looked at it from the side, it might look like a wave, yes, but it's actually spinning. And what it happens is, as light slows down, it just gets longer and longer and longer frequency. When you're in the blue range, you're here, way down here. Beep! And that is very impactful because you're spinning like crazy. That thing whacks into you at a bazillion miles an hour. You're in trouble. Now, when it's just way out like this, that's just going to bang you sort of slightly. That's what happens with red. Green is much more powerful. Red, blue is just off the scale. All right, there's red and green. The red just gets out of the way. At the same time, coming through the same venturi. The green is real powerful. It re concusses out here after it gets through the interference of the red. Same particle. And these are tumblers now. The white has hit the other white and it's tumbling it. Normally they spin on their axis according to the to the polarity of the earth. Up spin and down spin they call it. Okay, these are electron showers. These are sterile muons. They come from a muon neutrino, electron neutrino, which are attached together. They call them diaracs. Dirac neutrinos. When they come in and they hit some other medium, they divide. It's called Cheryenkov radiation. Muons are the black balls, you see? The electron shower is that shower. When they first came in, they were attached to a white and black ball. Now, the only reason you can see that black is because it's on top of the white. And then they reconcuss right here. They recombine, I'm sorry. And they, they turn back into a light particle. Now, what can we do with this right here? I think we can harvest that because that is a hundred percent raw electricity. And that's all you're doing when you pump your batteries up is you're pushing that raw white particles into those batteries. That's why they don't get real excessively heavy when you charge them up. They get a little heavier, but not nothing you can really detect because all it is is these electrons which have virtually no mass. And that, that's a fact. And I can show you that in Atomic Bomb Blast. I will because I just want to finish this up so you understand. Einstein was wrong. We might be able to get free energy. We just got to get away from this nonsense that you have to conform to his laws. His laws were wrong. We have to re repeal the laws. That's particles, and they're separated. That's fission, that's fusion, that's raw energy. Electron showers, that's dark matter. The dark matter is the black, it's a gravity, it sucks all the electrons in, and it will congeal into the center of a ball of electrons, and they call that a proton. Protons are completely coated with white particles, but the dark particles inside, which is the attractive part, they just miss the whole coating. And that changes everything. That changes every single thing there is to do with chemistry, physics, light, the universe. 
even to all the way down to biology and how fast enzymes work and how much how much diversity there is in between these they we only know about a few little isotopes but i think lithium has like 15 or 20 isotopes which is just they're almost lithium they're pretty close well all it means is that there's so many variations in between every one of these particles that when you're working with enzymes they make those things happen a bazillion times a second so you may be able to have thousands of isotopes for phosphorus not just one or two or five or ten you might have a thousand different isotopes but they have to be converted instantly they're the half-lifes they call it when you're working with enzymes it's hundreds of thousands hundreds of thousands reactions per second so you're never going to pick that up but that's the only way chemistry can work is to be able to get down to the to the particles and Einstein has destroyed everything literally destroyed everything and then when they again went to quantum and they started with all these quarks and this and da, 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 da. all there exists is the black particle and the white particle everything else is constructed of those two particles now do you think light coming through that is not going to be interfered with any of that stuff just come right through 186,000 miles a second forever no absolutely not we have no idea where we are this was taken with a cell phone. This is what's in space. These are the fields. This is our moon. It's crushing light, turning it blue. And it's pulling away, turning out more reddish. It doesn't have a field, though, because it's not spinning. The only thing that have fields are the spinning particles, and, and they are everywhere. I mean, look at this. You think light doesn't slow down coming through that? That's absolute insanity. Again, we have no idea where we are. And we're relying on the people that say, you have to follow this rule. We all know this. We all know that. No, you don't know anything about anything right now. There's nothing that is correct at the moment about physics. Not a thing. So if you want to challenge me, come on down. They won't. Not a single one of them will. Because I have the evidence, and I can prove it, and it's very simple to prove. So they hide because they want to get their big funding, and that's the only reason all of this nonsense science is going on. They have destroyed science in the interest of, of their pocketbooks. Okay, this just proves that there's two particles. There's a white one that has no mass whatsoever, burns like hell, and there's a black one that has all the mass and just knocks things over. Here it's going to happen in slow motion. This is atomic uh, atomcentral.com. Now the first thing that's going to happen is you see just huge bright glow with everything in the air, all the molecules glow. Now watch, just smoke, just smoke, not even moving, not even moving. And then all of a sudden the black will come, pew, and it goes flying, boom. All right. So what did we just see? We saw the house just vaporize. That's the white part. No mass, no push. But the black ones came right behind it, and that was what knocked the house down. And now watch, it'll turn around and come back, because the black ones over here now don't have enough white ones. So they'll say, everybody come back. Watch it go out, and it'll turn around and start to come back. See it? Zoom! It's coming back. Why would that ever happen? The only reason is because what I'm telling you, the black is a gravity. You see this? This is literally identical, no difference whatsoever, to the atomic bomb blast. The atomic bomb is here. All of the sub-atomic particles, that means smaller than atoms, break and go out. And the black pushes the white ahead of it. Now the white is glowing like crazy, but there's no, there's no, there's no mass to it. So the house is here. Out it comes. Burn, 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 just vaporizing, nothing, just smoking up like crazy. And all of the combustibles are gone by the time the black hits, and then the black just carries the house away. That is what an atomic bomb is, and that, my friends, is a sub-atomic nuclear explosion. Divided the particles, and they will come back together, they always do, and they do it very, very fast.
I don't know, remember if I showed you this, but CMOS, we can see individual life photons, absolutely. And they've been doing this since this cell phone can see them. This is from 2012. Rod Warren f figured this out in 2012 that he could see photons with this. And then he went, like for years I worked with him. Uh, this is all the same stuff. And this is all we use. This is it. To do all that, well, you can see it. This is it, right here. This, this laser was the first thing he used through two little venturi pin nails just nails and that created a lot of the stuff you just saw it created a venturi it forced the fields to come together and crush themselves and then only the white ones could get through the slit it was so tiny and it, he it was sort of an accident but <laughs> who cares it proved my electron flood theory that's all i was looking to do you know i just want to show you this i'm not bragging i did this for my whole life i was in the army i was service in Nike Hercules missiles, missile sites, and I eventually wrote this paper to say that this, none of this stuff is right. It's all wrong. And the, the, what we have here is, uh, is, is dipoles, 100% dipoles. There is no such thing as a positive nucleus with little tiny negatives surrounding it. They would just snap right in there. It's just incredible. I said, this is not right. You guys are wrong. And, uh, of course, you know how that went. <laughs> so, I, it, I got out of this bit. I said, forget about it. You guys are never, ever, ever going to change because they're, there's like a gang. And they will not... Einstein is just like a god to them. It's almost like a cult following Einstein. It's absolutely insane because he's totally wrong. And it's v absolutely known now. But I just saw the other day, oh, yeah, light never slows down. We know exactly where it is. 75,000 light years away. It's, we have no idea where it is. None. Zero. It could be right down the street as far as I'm concerned. Light slows down very, very fast in these fields. So don't tell me it's uh, these things are these kind of distances. It's, it's absolutely nonsensical, my friends. So Einstein was wrong. Who wants to challenge Roger Spur? Albert Einstein, I'm sorry you're not here, my friend, to challenge me because, boy, I'll tell you, I would love that. So find somebody else that thinks they're smart like Albert was because I want to talk to that guy. Unfortunately, you don't want to talk to me. Okay, my friends, I'm much, much, much more on this, but my new atomic model is the DEFT model, D-E-F-T, Dipole Electron Flood Theory. And what does that mean? It means that every nucleus is made of dipoles. It's not a big positive. It's a, it's a, a dipole nucleus. And these are the particles that make up the nucleus. Light makes up nucleuses. Right? They're dipoles. They, and once they add together, they get a dark core and then they get a white surrounded coating. I, I've shown this very clearly and it's very easy to see.